Hi guys, Ashley from Ash Cash Budget here. I am not home at the moment, but I wanted to finally bring you this video all about the rescued kitten that I've talked about the past few months and the expenses that I've had in my budget because of her. If you're new to this channel, I am following the Dave Ramsey baby steps. I am currently on baby step number two, paying off about $42,000 in debt. And I wanna be debt free by 33. So click the little red subscribe button down below if you want to continue to follow me on my journey. I'm going to go over all the expenses that were incurred. So basically all of the expenses that are involved with having a new kitten is pretty much what I'm going to go over. There was a little bit extra just because of what we had to do when we first got her and show you a bunch of cute pictures and some video of her as I talk about it. I think I must have found her on the 2nd of August because we took her to her first doctor's appointment on the 3rd of August. One day we were going to work pretty early. I was walking from the parking garage to the venue and I saw this little kitten just sitting on the sidewalk, kind of in the shade. It was still a little hot around this time because it's August. Of course, uh, I tried to call it and it ran and it went into a little pipe. Since she was such a small kitten, she fit in there. Of course, I tried to call at her, but she was too scared to come back out of the pipe. The next morning, we came back through, and at this time, I brought the cat carrier. I brought some tuna treats. They're like real tuna flakes, so very smelly. And I brought some cat food and some cat litter in a little like throwaway bowl. I wasn't sure if she would necessarily use it, but it was worth a try just in case. You know, a blanket inside of the cat carrier, all that stuff. I left most of the stuff inside of my car except for like the stuff that could spoil, like the cat food. And I just went to work. Um, I didn't see her inside of the pipe, but it was still pretty early. Um, but I had a break later on, and I didn't see her inside of the pipe, at least as far back as I could see. But it was basically this pipe that was kind of running under these planters. So I thought... I would go ahead and just kick the slide of the planter going all the way back to see if she was really far inside of that planter pipe that maybe she would be she would hear the vibrations and the sound and sure enough when I went back around to the opening of the pipe she was in eyesight now so it did take me like 30 minutes to try to coax her out you know I she had been being fed by somebody else. They had been leaving some hard food and some water. If she was with a parent cat, I would have maybe just let them kind of be. But she was all on her own, Another, no other cat. She was really tiny, living in a pipe. I just couldn't leave her there. So I tried to coax her out. She finally came to the opening and was trying to get some of the, the treats. And I tried to grab her. She went back in. So the next time I finally got her to come out, I just had to go ahead, even though I felt bad, just pin her down. Of course, she started freaking out, you know, hissing a little bit and meowing at me. But I just held her tight, and after a couple minutes, she kind of calmed down. I took her back to my car, got, like, the cat carrier and everything, all the other supplies, and took her back to the venue. Of course, other people were making fun of me for saving the cat for the rest of the day because I had a kitten inside of a cat carrier. Yeah, I put her in a separate room that nobody was really going into. She actually did use the litter, so I'm glad that I brought that. The next morning, I wanted to make sure if she needed some medical care that she could have that. And of course, she was just this little new kitten to us. So I wanted somebody to take care of her while I was at work. So my sister volunteered. And that's where that all started. So she volunteered to take her. So we went the very next morning to get her checked out at the doctor. I was worried that you never know what could happen with these street cats, what kind of stuff they could catch. She definitely looked like she had a respiratory infection. Her eye was all mucked up. She was sneezing and stuff like that. So she definitely had a respiratory infection, which they can't do much for. But they did give her some antibiotics to uh, help her immune system so that she could fight the infection. So... The doctor visit was $49, and the drops that we had to give her, the antibiotic, was $29, plus tax $582, so the total payment of her first visit was $83.82, and at the time, she weighed 
2.6 pounds. They didn't want to give her her shots until she fought the infection and was feeling better. So they said to bring her back in 10 days after we gave her the antibiotics for 10 days. Because I found her in a pipe, I decided to call her Piper. But then her boyfriend fell in love and they decided to keep the kitten. And when they decided to keep her, her boyfriend kept calling her Shaquille. So now her name is Shaquille. And I think they did it because of this. So I agreed to help with all of the vaccinations and getting her spayed and getting her up and running as long as she took over the care from there. So I did pay for some stuff from PetSmart and Walmart to kind of get her started, just some pet supplies. But at the time, we weren't sure if she was keeping her or not. So even if I got her, she would have to have things like the kitten food and then some extra wet food and stuff like that. So it was $35.87 at PetSmart and $8.77 at Walmart. This included another cheaper cat box, um, some food bowls, things like that for her. So really not that much money, a little over $40 for all of that stuff. We went back, she was healthy. Thank goodness that there was not more more wrong with her. I mean, that first visit, I mean, it was already $83. And if there was anything more wrong with her, I'm just glad that she was a pretty healthy kitten except for having a respiratory infection, I'm sure, from being outside and everything. August 13th, we paid $32 just for the doctor recheck, the, the exam. And then we paid $21 for the FVRCP feline vaccination plus tax $4.41, so the payment for that was $57.41. And by now, she had gained half a pound. She was 3.1 pounds in just those 10 days. I think they estimated at that time that she was around four months old, so they said to come back in another, like, three weeks to get the other vaccinations. September 6th, we went back for the rabies vaccination, which is good for a year, $19.00. And then the second round of the FVRCP feline vaccination, so that was $21. Tax, $3.32. So that time was $43.32. At this point, she weighed 4.1 pounds. So she gained a whole nother pound within those three weeks. And so at this point, they had estimated that she was about five months. They were suggesting spaying her around six months. So we made another appointment a month later. In the meantime, actually right before we went on the 6th, we wanted to make sure we had all our SNAP stuff ready. So we went and of course link that SNAP program down below. It's a great program. You just pay a copay basically of $30 and they give you a voucher to get a spay or neuter done. We had our voucher ready just to make sure. Now they didn't put a weight down for when we took her in because she just went in for a surgery and that was on the 2nd of October. What got covered by the voucher is the actual spaying which was $109 because we only had to pay $30 to snap. So that saved us $79. The other things were what they call optional so that's not covered with the voucher but we paid for it. One was the microchip with lifetime registration, so that was $46.50. And then the other two were more of a comfort thing, an IV with fluids, which we thought was important, but they consider it optional. So that was an extra $36. And then painkillers, which we thought, you know, if you're going through surgery, you're going to want painkillers. So that was $17.40. And then the tax was $8.30. So we paid $30 for the SNAP voucher and $108.20 for everything else. To, so to get her spayed was basically $138.20. She was messing with her surgery area, so they recommended putting a baby onesie on her. And now she is all caught up. She doesn't need to go and get vaccinations till next year. And then my sister can pay for all of that. But since I'm the one that rescued her and decided to take her off of the streets, I incurred those costs because I really cared about this kitten. If my sister didn't keep her, even though I don't need more than two cats, I would have kept her. I think that comes out to a total of $367.34 over a two-month period. 
Really, it was spread over three months of budgeting, but I started paying for things on August 3rd and it ended on October 2nd. So that's over two months. It was just part of August, September, and October budget, $367.34. So it was pretty expensive, but I think it was worth it. So that is the story of Shaquille the rescued kitten. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed these cute pictures of the kitten, but also I thought I would bring to you just how much it kind of cost to get the kitten, you know, started up in life. Besides like some extra food and toys maybe, but for all the basics and to make sure that they are spayed because that is a very important spay and neuter pets and to make sure that she had her vaccinations for the year. That is it. I'll of course put the links up above to subscribe and another video that YouTube will suggest for you guys and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!